Let me show you how we knit the toe on the Bosnian sock. I've cast on 12 stitches and your pattern will tell you how many stitches to cast on. I've put on 12 and I cast on with the long tail cast on over two needles. So I'll take one needle out and now I'm not going to turn my work. You can notice that I'm doing this on double pointed needles. You can use circular needles, but it's a little bit of a pain in the neck because what we're going to do is slide the knitting to the other end, and that's a longer slide if you have a circular needle. But otherwise, it's the same thing. And now I'm going to take my yarn across the back, and I'm going to start knitting on this end, and I will just knit regularly across the row. You can see that strand of yarn hanging there between the stitches as I'm knitting. I'm going to have one of those for every row of knitting. This is kind of like making an eye cord, only we're not pulling it tight to make a tube. So every time I finish the row, I slide it to the other end of the needle, and then I just start knitting again at the beginning. Let me do one more row and show you a trick for how you can easily count the rows of knitting in this as well. So there's nothing special to this, except that you slide to the other end instead of turning. So this is a way to make a little rectangle of stockinette stitch with no purling. When I turn my piece over, you can see now I've knitted two rows and I have two strands of yarn across the back. So that's an easy way to count your rows on this, instead of trying to count the actual stitches or keeping track with a row counter or anything. So you'll have all of these strands on the back of the toe, which adds an extra layer of cushioning in the toe of the sock. Sometimes people ask me if that's un uncomfortable, but I haven't found it to be uncomfortable at all. But if you think it'll bother you, you can knit your toe back and forth in a regular stockinette stitch and knit and purl back and forth and just have a single layer of fabric and that's completely fine. It won't change anything else or ruin your sock in any way. Now that we've finished knitting the rectangle for our toe, we need to set up to knit in the round. So we'll have to pick up stitches on the other three sides where we don't have live stitches. Remember, we were knitting every row and not turning. So again here, we're going to not turn. I've attached another color so you can see clearly what I'm doing. Um, and you may change colors after you do the toe or you may continue in the same color according to your preference and the pattern you're working on. First thing we're going to do is look at the side of our knitting and you can see the strands where we let them float across the back, pull the sides of it in a little bit. And where we're going to pick up stitches is by going under two strands that are actually kind of folded onto the back of our piece right now. And yours might look a little different because your yarn might be stretchier than mine, you may have stranded your um, pieces a little bit more loosely so it's not pulled in quite so much but even if it is this is fine. You might have to peek over the edge like I just did though to see the two strands of yarn where you're going to pick up a stitch. So in this sample we had 12. I'm going to pick up 12. I want to have four sections of 12 stitches or 48 stitches all together for this sock and in the pattern that you're working on it will tell you how many stitches you need. So I'm just going to go under the two strands on the edge and knit up a stitch. And you can do this in whatever way is comfortable for you to hold a yarn and needle. Some people like to use a crochet hook to pull these strands up and then slide them onto a knitting needle. One, two, three, four. So you see I'm just going underneath the two strands, wrapping the yarn like I'm knitting a regular stitch and then pulling it through to the front. After you finish knitting the new stitches up across this side, the first side of the toe, you rotate 90 degrees again. And now we're to the cast on edge where I did the long tail cast on over two needles. So my loops on the cast on edge are nice and loose and that makes it really easy for me to pick up a stitch all the way across. Now usually when you see people remove a provisional cast on or pick up in the cast on edge, they end up being one stitch short and that's normal. But I'm going to show you by starting and ending all the way at the very edges, we'll be able to get 12 stitches because remember we started with 12, we picked up 12 here, we want to get 12 on this side as well. So look at the very edge of our piece and you can see these diagonal lines. At the beginning it looks a little awkward because 
The first one is actually the stitch that's on the needle and the working yarn is coming out of it. And it also looks a little awkward because we stranded our yarn across the back instead of purling. But we're actually going to go right into that first loop and pick up a stitch. And then we go right into the next one and pick up a stitch. And we're only going under one strand of yarn here because we want to make this work just as if it was a provisional cast on. So can you see how each time there's a loose loop, I'm just going to knit up into it. What this makes it look like is the knitting continues straight on from the end of that toe as if it were a provisional cast on or not done anything except smooth knitting. So I just go all the way across when I get to the end, I just want to make sure that I don't stop too soon and I go all the way and pick up that very last loop on the end and I have my 12 stitches. Then I'm going to go again 90 degrees every time turn it. I'm going to pick up stitches along this side just as I did here and then I'll knit across here and then I'll be done. Here's what your sock toe looks like when you're done picking up all around. So remember, we started here with our original tail, we did our cast on and made our whole rectangle. Then we turned 90 degrees, we picked up stitches across here, then we picked up stitches in the loose loops on the cast on edge, then we picked up across the second side, and then I just knit back to the beginning of the round. So this is, if you're changing colors, an easy way to tell when you're done because you get back to the corner and all of the stitches are in the new color. If you didn't change color, um, then you'll be one row across from where your original cast on was. So you'll be at the other end of that, at the top of the knitted piece, not at the bottom. So then we'll divide our stitches up into two sections mentally, or if we're working on circular needles, it'll be two sections literally. With the first side and the second side will be the top of the foot. The third side and the fourth side will be the sole of the foot. And actually it doesn't matter which half is the top or the bottom of the foot until you start working in the patterns, but you do need to divide it in the two halves and you'll be working increases at this corner and this corner to create the shape for your toe. And your pattern will tell you exactly where to work the increases. So in a finished sock, your toe might look something like this. If I open this sock up, you can see that it has that rectangle 